So now in this video, we're going to look at the internal resistance of these two supercapacitors here. So generally speaking, capacitors and supercapacitors don't have uh, any real internal resistance to speak of. Of course, everything has some resistance, uh, even these wires. But for the most part, capacitors have uh, practically none. Same with supercapacitors. So these particular ones, these are four farad supercapacitors rated for 5.5 volts each. So each one of them is connected to the rail independently. They are parallel of each other. So they're both charged to 5 volts right now. And we have the power supply directly to the rail. There's still a little current charging them up a little bit. They're not uh, quite completely 5 volts, but uh, practically. And we have the meter set to limit current to 1.5 amps. This particular meter, though, looks at capacitors as a short circuit. These have internal resistance though, so it doesn't do that with these. But most capacitors and supercapacitors, it sees a short circuit and it uh, shuts off because it thinks there's a short circuit. But here we have a direct connection to the supercapacitors and it charged. The current was limited by the resistance and now we are fully charged. So let's add the uh, multimeter to this. So I was uh, measuring current last time I had the meter. I have it at voltage now. And I should have stuck it back there. But in any case, now we have this set to measure voltage. And uh, we'll just stay back here uh, for now. But uh, there you can see I have the probe backwards. We have 5 volts at the rail. So it said negative 5 volts right there. And uh, so yeah, the power supply is fully done charging. Let's zoom in a little bit. We will measure the uh, resistance of uh, this resistor right here so it's got the wire down there the other one plugs into the positive rail so I can get you can see this is floating here it's not connected to anything so I can take a measurement there it's a 5 ohm resistor so it's a 10 watt resistor with 5 ohms of resistance and uh, so of course you can go to the metal wire there and get the same reading there are a direct connection right there and uh, since that doesn't go to anything then uh, none of this resistor is electrically connected to anything else for the most part. So, now we are going to go to measuring current. So we're going to go to the amp range, pull this out, and put it to the 10 amp or less setting. Because we have 5 volts at the supercapacitors. And so, if we take 5 volts, put it across 5 ohms of resistance, we expect 1 amp of current. So that's basic ohms law. That's if they have no internal resistance. Of course, if they have internal resistance, it's going to be less current. So first thing we have to do is unplug the power supply here. And so if we had a little current still feeding in there, it would have gotten to zero right now. It's already zero. And uh, so that power supply is completely disconnected. Whatever current we get will be due to, due to the uh, capacitors and the uh, resistor right there. And uh, so now we go here. We expect one amp, but let's watch what we actually get. And you can see it was closer to 0.5 amps about that. And as the voltage of these supercapacitors go down, the amount of current goes down. So it's still going through the uh, resistor. So now I'm going to yank this out and we're going to measure a voltage. Voltage right there. We'll measure the voltage uh, at the rail or the super capacitors. Doesn't matter. The positive rail and the negative rails on both sides are directly connected. So now you see we actually have a little bit of a voltage rise. These are polarized super capacitors and uh, polarized capacitors and super capacitors when you discharge them and then suddenly take a load off of them so that they got very high resistance their voltage tends to drift back up a bit towards where it was before and so that's uh, what we're seeing there I forget the uh, technical term right now for that but that that's really common with these uh, polarized uh, capacitors when you discharge them if they just got discharged and you uh, take the load off them, you have an open circuit across them, their voltage drifts back up a little bit. So that's something to always be aware of. So now, when we had the uh, two supercapacitors here uh, charged up to 5 volts and we measured the current, we got about half 
not exactly half, but about half the current that we expected. So we're not terribly worried about uh, high precision in this video. We're just going to just say half. So that tells us with the two of them, we probably had a total of 10 ohms of resistance. And so that tells me that each one of the supercapacitors had 10 ohms of uh, resistance, internal resistance, approximately. And then when you put them in parallel, though, their resistance gets cut in half, their equivalent resistance, because they're both providing current at that point. And, uh, and then this resistor adds 5 ohms. So we had an equivalent 5 ohms and then 5 ohms there for uh, a series resistance of probably uh, 10 ohms of resistance because we had 5 volts, 500 milliamps of current approximately. So now you can see we are charging this single uh, supercapacitor and we'll come back to it when it is pretty much uh, spot on. 5 volts so hardly any current is flowing through it and now we are back it's still charging a little bit we will uh, pull back and that's because there's a voltage difference between what it's charged to and the 5 volts that's being supplied but it's not very much so as we saw there's not a whole lot of internal resistance but there was some that did lower the amount of current but nowhere near to uh, that level so we just have a slight voltage difference I'll turn this meter on and we can measure the uh, voltage at the uh, rail right there. So yep, that 4.9. Now we will unplug the uh, power supply from the uh, power rail and this will give us the supercapacitor voltage. So right there, pretty much the same uh, tad bit less right there. And it's going to go down over time a little bit. So we want to kind of try to uh, speed this up a little bit. So now we're going to measure amps again and we're going to yank this and put it back to the 10 amp spot so with this particular video we got to jump back and forth quite a bit and we're going to measure through the uh, resistor again but also there and remember last time we did this we had about 0.5 amps a little more than 0.5 at first but it quickly dropped and uh, once i get a connection there there you can see we had about 0.3 and then it quickly dropped right there so the first time we probably had about 0.6 right away but then it uh, rapidly dropped to about 0.5 and there you can see it is rapidly uh, dropping again and again once uh, we're done measuring the current letting the current go through there and we go back to uh, voltage we go across the uh, supercapacitor we'll see again I uh, forget the technical name but the voltage drifting back up a little bit right there so uh, super capacitors are not quite as simple as they're perfect uh, usually you talk about them as if they're perfect no resistance at all this particular case it does have significant resistance but also as current comes out of them the voltage goes down as current goes into them the voltage goes up but there's some other factors that come into play too so as we saw once we release the load from there the voltage drifted back up a little bit so that's just something to be aware of not a big deal right there so we have that one now let's go back to charging this one for the next measurement and demonstration and now we are pretty much fully charged as you can see there and so we are going to skip the voltage measurement we will just yank that there you can see it's done charging and we will come over to uh, the meter and set it to measure current again the amp range right there and in fact let's just yank this resistor we are done with that resistor so we come here and we're going to measure the uh, current that flows so we can just go to the jumpers again and there you can see it was about half of an amp by itself at 5 volts so it looks like it's probably a little less than 10 ohms of resistance internally within it so it's like a capacitor in series with a resistor so this is a direct and you'll see the current go up a little bit at first from what it was because the voltage rose a little bit but there you can see it quickly uh, went down and so that is with one of them and so now we'll charge it up so it looks like
probably a little less than 10 ohms of internal resistance from that test right there. So now what we're going to do, again, these have internal resistance, so I'm just going to grab this one. These are polarized, by the way, so that side has to be more negative, that side more positive. There's a little plus right there, plus there's arrows. I think pointing to the negative. I would not want to put this parallel to another supercapacitor if they didn't have internal resistance, but we already proved that they do. And there you just saw current go up because now it is charging the uh, two of them independently for the most part, but uh, at the same time also. And now both capacitors are practically the five volts that we're feeding. We will unplug the power supply, come back to the meter. So I took the meter off of current and out of that spot we're gonna go back to it again so I do that because it's safer to leave the meter in the voltage setting than it is the current setting so I try to keep the habit of taking it off there as soon as I'm done taking measurements every time but in any case we're going to zoom in to get a better look and not dilly dally too long because their voltages are going to drift down a little bit but now we're going to see the current remember these do have internal resistance so 5 volts and based on the current we get so we did have more than one amp of current looks like it was 1.2 for a brief second and quickly got to about one so again with the two of them we expect somewhere close to about 10 ohms of resistance in each one of these but now they're parallel so they can both provide power to the rail independently and both provide a certain amount of current so we'll get twice the current from the uh, two of them right there so it's an equivalent of uh, probably a little less than 5 ohms of resistance from the uh, two of them so they both probably have just a tiny bit less but pretty close to uh, 10 ohms of resistance each. So in any case, hopefully that all makes sense. I will try to uh, get that all in printed form and stuff in the future. But in any case, hopefully this still made sense. We can turn the power off there. So we turn the meter off, we turn the power off there. That's a good idea to always do that uh, when you're done to avoid accidents and avoid wasting electricity if you're using batteries the batteries drain if you don't unplug stuff so that's a good reminder to do all of that but in case that's it for this video thanks for watching i will see you in the next video